Pulse 2023 Solterra EV over wheels, says don't drive until fixed. Subaru has announced a recall for 1182 units of its 2023 Solterra SUV over the same darn will hub bolt issue that plagued the company's first all-electric vehicle last year. Subaru and Toyota developed the Solterra and the Toyota version of the EV, called the BZ4X, together. Only Solterras are affected this time around because the problems were caused by contractor teams who only worked on the Subaru models. If you have an affected Solterra, Subaru said you should not drive it. Instead, call your local Subaru dealer to have it towed and repaired at no cost to the owner. Subaru has issued a recall for more than 1,000 model year 2023 Solterra SUVs over a hub bolt issue that the automaker supposedly fixed last year. The all-electric SUVs were repaired, sorry, were supposed to have been repaired, alongside hundreds of Toyota BZ4X EVs. Toyota and Subaru developed these vehicles together, which ended up visually different and mechanically similar. Before too many BZ4X EVs were sold, 258, to be exact, Toyota issued a recall over the possibility that the wheels could fall off. Subaru did the same for the Solterra, but at that time, none had been delivered to customers. The two automakers developed a repair remedy that involved updating the wheels and replacing the hub bolts with a new hub bolt with washer design. That's usually the end of the story as far as recalls go. But late last week, Subaru announced that the repair work on some of the Solteras hadn't been completed correctly. Subaru said it knows the affected vehicles came through one of two port locations and that the teams the company contracted to do the work did not properly complete the repair procedure resulting in the potential for significantly under-torqued bolts. Subaru didn't say how many vehicles were worked on by the specific teams, but out of an abundance of caution, Subaru is recalling all vehicles repaired at all port locations supported by the third-party contractor. That means that a total of 1182 Solteras are being recalled. Subaru said that Solterra vehicles without the original hub bolt concern and vehicles repaired at other facilities are not affected. For the record, through the end of January, Solterra had sold a total of 1418 Solteras. The fix, as it was before, sounds easy enough. First off, Subaru said no one should drive an affected Solterra because, again, there's a chance the wheels could come loose or fall off. Instead, Solterra owners should call their local dealer to have it towed in and inspected and, if necessary, to have the hub bolts retorqued to the correct specification. The towing and repair costs will not be the responsibility of the customer. Owners can look up their Solterra's VIN to see if it is included in the recall by visiting the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration Recalls website or by calling the Vehicle Safety Hotline at 888-327-4236. Subaru recalls 2023 Solterra EV over wheels, says don't drive until fixed. Subaru has announced a recall for 1182 units of its 2023 Solterra SUV over the same darn will hub bolt issue that plagued the company's first all-electric vehicle last year. Subaru and Toyota developed the Solterra and the Toyota version of the EV, called the BZ4X, together. Only Solterras are affected this time around because the problems were caused by contractor teams who only worked on the Subaru models. If you have an affected Solterra, Subaru said you should not drive it. Instead, call your local Subaru dealer to have it towed and repaired at no cost to the owner. Subaru has issued a recall for more than 1,000 model year 2023 Solterra SUVs over a hub bolt issue that the automaker supposedly fixed last year. The all-electric SUVs were repaired, sorry, were supposed to have been repaired, alongside hundreds of Toyota BZ4X EVs. Toyota and Subaru developed these vehicles together, which ended up visually different and mechanically similar. Before too many BZ4X EVs were sold, 258, to be exact, Toyota issued a recall over the possibility that the wheels could fall off. Subaru did the same for the Solterra, but at that time, none had been delivered to customers. The two automakers developed a repair remedy that involved updating the wheels and replacing the hub bolts with a new hub bolt with washer design, that's usually the end of the story as far as recalls go. But late last week, Subaru announced that the repair work on some of the Solterras hadn't been completed correctly. Subaru said it knows the affected vehicles came through one of two port locations and that the teams the company contracted to do the work did not properly complete the repair procedure resulting in the potential for significantly under-torqued bolts. Subaru didn't say how many vehicles were worked on by the specific teams, but out of an abundance of caution, Subaru is recalling all vehicles repaired at all port locations supported by the third-party contractor. That means that a total of 1182 Solteras are being recalled. Subaru said that Solterra vehicles without the original hub bolt concern and vehicles repaired at other facilities are not affected. For the record, through the end of January, Solterra had sold a total of 1418 Solteras. The fix, as it was before, sounds easy enough. First off, Subaru said no one should drive an affected Solterra because, again, there's a chance the wheels could come loose or fall off. 
Instead, Solterra owners should call their local dealer to have it towed in and inspected and, if necessary, to have the hub bolts retorqued to the correct specification. The towing and repair costs will not be the responsibility of the customer. Owners can look up their Solterra's VIN to see if it is included in the recall by visiting the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration Recalls website or by calling the Vehicle Safety Hotline at 888-327-4236. Subaru Recalls 2023 Solterra EV over wheels, says don't drive until fixed. Subaru has announced a recall for 1182 units of its 2023 Solterra SUV over the same darn will hub bolt issue that plagued the company's first all-electric vehicle last year. Subaru and Toyota developed the Solterra and the Toyota version of the EV, called the BZ4X, together. Only Solterras are affected this time around because the problems were caused by contractor teams who only worked on the Subaru models. If you haven't affected Solterra, Subaru said you should not drive it. Instead, call your local Subaru dealer to have it towed and repaired at no cost to the owner. Subaru has issued a recall for more than 1,000 model year 2023 Solterra SUVs over a hub bolt issue that the automaker supposedly fixed last year. The all-electric SUVs were repaired, sorry, were supposed to have been repaired, alongside hundreds of Toyota BZ4X EVs. Toyota and Subaru developed these vehicles together, which ended up visually different and mechanically similar. Before too many BZ4X EVs were sold, 258, to be exact, Toyota issued a recall over the possibility that the wheels could fall off. Subaru did the same for the Solterra, but at that time, none had been delivered to customers. The two automakers developed a repair remedy that involved updating the wheels and replacing the hub bolts with a new hub bolt with washer design. That's usually the end of the story as far as recalls go. But late last week, Subaru announced that the repair work on some of the Solteras hadn't been completed correctly. Subaru said it knows the affected vehicles came through one of two port locations and that the teams the company contracted to do the work did not properly complete the repair procedure resulting in the potential for significantly undertorqued bolts. Subaru didn't say how many vehicles were worked on by the specific teams, but out of an abundance of caution, Subaru is recalling all vehicles repaired at all port locations supported by the third-party contractor. That means that a total of 1182 Solteras are being recalled. Subaru said that Solterra vehicles without the original hub bolt concern and vehicles repaired at other facilities are not affected. For the record, through the end of January, Solterra had sold a total of 1418 Solteras. The fix, as it was before, sounds easy enough. First off, Subaru said no one should drive an affected Solterra because, again, there's a chance the wheels could come loose or fall off. Instead, Solterra owners should call their local dealer to have it towed in and inspected and, if necessary, to have the hub bolts retorqued to the correct specification. The towing and repair costs will not be the responsibility of the customer. Owners can look up their Solterra's VIN to see if it is included in the recall by visiting the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration Recalls website or by calling the Vehicle Safety Hotline at 888-327-4236. Subaru Recalls 2023 Solterra EV over wheels, says don't drive until fixed. Subaru has announced a recall for 1182 units of its 2023 Solterra SUV over the same darn will hub bolt issue that plagued the company's first all-electric vehicle last year. Subaru and Toyota developed the Solterra and the Toyota version of the EV, called the BZ4X, together. Only Solteras are affected this time around because the problems were caused by contractor teams who only worked on the Subaru models. If you haven't affected Solterra, Subaru said you should not drive it. Instead, call your local Subaru dealer to have it towed and repaired at no cost to the owner. Subaru has issued a recall for more than 1,000 model year 2023 Solterra SUVs over a hub bolt issue that the automaker supposedly fixed last year. The all-electric SUVs were repaired, sorry, were supposed to have been repaired, alongside hundreds of Toyota BZ4X EVs. Toyota and Subaru developed these vehicles together, which ended up visually different and mechanically similar. Before too many BZ4X EVs were sold, 258, to be exact, Toyota issued a recall over the possibility that the wheels could fall off. Subaru did the same for the Solterra, but at that time, none had been delivered to customers. The two automakers developed a repair remedy that involved updating the wheels and replacing the hub bolts with a new hub bolt with washer design. That's usually the end of the story as far as recalls go. But late last week, Subaru announced that the repair work on some of the Solteras hadn't been completed correctly. Subaru said it knows the affected vehicles came through one of two port locations and that the teams the company contracted to do the work did not properly complete the repair procedure resulting in the potential for significantly undertorqued bolts. Subaru didn't say how many vehicles were worked on by the specific teams, but out of an abundance of caution, Subaru is recalling all vehicles repaired at all port locations supported by the third-party contractor. 
That means that a total of 1182 Solteras are being recalled. Subaru said that Solterra vehicles without the original hub bolt concern and vehicles repaired at other facilities are not affected. For the record, through the end of January, Solterra had sold a total of 1418 Solteras. The fix, as it was before, sounds easy enough. First off, Subaru said no one should drive an affected Solterra because, again, there's a chance the wheels could come loose or fall off. Instead, Solterra owners should call their local dealer to have it towed in and inspected and, if necessary, to have the hub bolts retorqued to the correct specification. The towing and repair costs will not be the responsibility of the customer. Owners can look up their Solterra's VIN to see if it is included in the recall by visiting the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration Recalls website or by calling the Vehicle Safety Hotline at 888-327-4236. Subaru recalls 2023 Solterra EV over wheels, says don't drive until fixed. Subaru has announced a recall for 1182 units of its 2023 Solterra SUV over the same darn will hub bolt issue that plagued the company's first all-electric vehicle last year. Subaru and Toyota developed the Solterra and the Toyota version of the EV, called the BZ4X, together. Only Solteras are affected this time around because the problems were caused by contractor teams who only worked on the Subaru models. If you have an affected Solterra, Subaru said you should not drive it. Instead, call your local Subaru dealer to have it towed and repaired at no cost to the owner. Subaru has issued a recall for more than 1,000 model year 2023 Solterra SUVs over a hub bolt issue that the automaker supposedly fixed last year. The all-electric SUVs were repaired, sorry, were supposed to have been repaired, alongside hundreds of Toyota BZ4X EVs. Toyota and Subaru developed these vehicles together, which ended up visually different and mechanically similar. Before too many BZ4X EVs were sold, 258, to be exact, Toyota issued a recall over the possibility that the wheels could fall off. Subaru did the same for the Solterra, but at that time, none had been delivered to customers. The two automakers developed a repair remedy that involved updating the wheels and replacing the hub bolts with a new hub bolt with washer design. That's usually the end of the story as far as recalls go. But late last week, Subaru announced that the repair work on some of the Solteras hadn't been completed correctly. Subaru said it knows the affected vehicles came through one of two port locations and that the teams the company contracted to do the work did not properly complete the repair procedure resulting in the potential for significantly undertorqued bolts. Subaru didn't say how many vehicles were worked on by the specific teams, but out of an abundance of caution, Subaru is recalling all vehicles repaired at all port locations supported by the third-party contractor. That means that a total of 1182 Solteras are being recalled. Subaru said that Solterra vehicles without the original hub bolt concern and vehicles repaired at other facilities are not affected. For the record, through the end of January, Solterra had sold a total of 1418 Solteras. The fix, as it was before, sounds easy enough. First off, Subaru said no one should drive an affected Solterra because, again, there's a chance the wheels could come loose or fall off. Instead, Solterra owners should call their local dealer to have it towed in and inspected and, if necessary, to have the hub bolts retorqued to the correct specification. The towing and repair costs will not be the responsibility of the customer. Owners can look up their Solterra's VIN to see if it is included in the recall by visiting the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration Recalls website or by calling the Vehicle Safety Hotline at 888-327-4236. Subaru recalls 2023 Solterra EV over wheels, says don't drive until fixed. Subaru has announced a recall for 1182 units of its 2023 Solterra SUV over the same darn will hub bolt issue that plagued the company's first all-electric vehicle last year. Subaru and Toyota developed the Solterra and the Toyota version of the EV, called the BZ4X, together. Only Solteras are affected this time around because the problems were caused by contractor teams who only worked on the Subaru models. If you have an affected Solterra, Subaru said you should not drive it. Instead, call your local Subaru dealer to have it towed and repair it at no cost to the owner. Subaru has issued a recall for more than 1,000 model year 2023 Solterra SUVs over a hub bolt issue that the automaker supposedly fixed last year. The all-electric SUVs were repaired, sorry, were supposed to have been repaired, alongside hundreds of Toyota BZ4X EVs. Toyota and Subaru developed these vehicles together, which ended up visually different and mechanically similar. Before too many BZ4X EVs were sold, 258, to be exact, Toyota issued a recall over the possibility that the wheels could fall off. Subaru did the same for the Solterra, but at that time, none had been delivered to customers. The two automakers developed a repair remedy that involved updating the wheels and replacing the hub bolts with a new hub bolt with washer design. That's usually the end of the story as far as recalls go. 
But late last week, Subaru announced that the repair work on some of the Solteras hadn't been completed correctly. Subaru said it knows the affected vehicles came through one of two port locations, and that the teams the company contracted to do the work did not properly complete the repair procedure resulting in the potential for significantly under-torqued bolts. Subaru didn't say how many vehicles were worked on by the specific teams, but out of an abundance of caution, Subaru is recalling all vehicles repaired at all port locations supported by the third-party contractor. That means that a total of 1182 Solteras are being recalled. Subaru said that Solterra vehicles without the original hub bolt concern and vehicles repaired at other facilities are not affected. For the record, through the end of January, Solterra had sold a total of 1418 Solteras. The fix, as it was before, sounds easy enough. First off, Subaru said no one should drive an affected Solterra because, again, there's a chance the wheels could come loose or fall off. Instead, Solterra owners should call their local dealer to have it towed in and inspected and, if necessary, to have the hub bolts retorqued to the correct specification. The towing and repair costs will not be the responsibility of the customer. Owners can look up their Solterra's VIN to see if it is included in the recall by visiting the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration Recalls website or by calling the Vehicle Safety Hotline at 888-327-4236. Subaru recalls 2023 Solterra EV over wheels, says don't drive until fixed. Subaru has announced a recall for 1182 units of its 2023 Solterra SUV over the same darn will hub bolt issue that plagued the company's first all-electric vehicle last year. Subaru and Toyota developed the Solterra and the Toyota version of the EV, called the BZ4X, together. Only Solteras are affected this time around because the problems were caused by contractor teams who only worked on the Subaru models. If you have an affected Solterra, Subaru said you should not drive it. Instead, call your local Subaru dealer to have it towed and repaired at no cost to the owner. Subaru has issued a recall for more than 1,000 model year 2023 Solterra SUVs over a hub bolt issue that the automaker supposedly fixed last year. The all-electric SUVs were repaired, sorry, were supposed to have been repaired, alongside hundreds of Toyota BZ4X EVs. Toyota and Subaru developed these vehicles together, which ended up visually different and mechanically similar. Before too many BZ4X EVs were sold, 258, to be exact, Toyota issued a recall over the possibility that the wheels could fall off. Subaru did the same for the Solterra, but at that time, none had been delivered to customers. The two automakers developed a repair remedy that involved updating the wheels and replacing the hub bolts with a new hub bolt with washer design. That's usually the end of the story as far as recalls go. But late last week, Subaru announced that the repair work on some of the Solteras hadn't been completed correctly. Subaru said it knows the affected vehicles came through one of two port locations and that the teams the company contracted to do the work did not properly complete the repair procedure resulting in the potential for significantly under-torqued bolts. Subaru didn't say how many vehicles were worked on by the specific teams, but out of an abundance of caution, Subaru is recalling all vehicles repaired at all port locations. Megarex Megaraptor, Pickup Colossus The Megaraptor, a mutant Ford Super Duty pickup from Megarex, is big. How big? It's so big, it disrupted international shipping for weeks after it got stuck in the Suez Canal. It's so big, there's snow on the roof that never melts. It needs rear axle steering or a hinge in the middle. The turnkey base price is $135,000, and you'll also want a budget for one of those wide-load pilot vehicles to drive a quarter-mile ahead and verify clearance for upcoming overpasses. Lift the diesel trucks, meet your new god. The Megaraptor recipe calls for a Ford Super Duty diesel 4x4, F250, F350, or F450, a 4.0 or 4.5-inch suspension lift, bridge girder size Megarex radius arms, trophy truck-style bodywork with a clamshell front end, military MRAP wheels, and 46-inch tires that weigh around 400 pounds per corner with their hub adapters. The final drive is re-geared to a 4.88 to 1 ratio and the speedometer corrected. The resulting creation is surprisingly proportional. Like mountains and skyscrapers, the Megaraptor requires some known frame of reference to visually communicate its enormity. Those flared fiberglass fenders add 16.0 inches of width. The floorboards are about 3 feet off the ground. Wait? It's flirting with 10,000 pounds. But that's okay because the tires are rated for 12,300 pounds. Each. Fortunately, a diesel-powered F-350, like the one hiding beneath all this chutzpah, is designed to haul, even when its payload is itself. You perceive the mass of the wheel and tire assemblies through the steering, and the brakes feel about like they would if there were a ton of concrete in the bed. But it's surprisingly easy to adapt to Megaraptor driving dynamics. Like 787 pilots and ship captains, you just plan your moves in advance. 
Aaron Richardette, owner of Megarex, says the Ford Super Duty is so brawny in the first place that it lends itself to Megaraptor treatment, even in F-250 guys. There's really no difference between an F-250 and F-350 except the springs, so our usual starting point is an F-250 Lariat, he says. While Megarex will convert an owner's truck, the upfitter usually just buys a new one and builds the whole thing, about 40 last year. If you're looking for stock Super Duty fenders, we know where you can find a few. Richardette claims durability hasn't been a problem thus far, despite the enormous wheel and tire assemblies. Super Duties are overbuilt in the first place, he says. Ford doesn't want grungy work trucks coming back in under warranty. For the Mega Raptor curious, we'd point out that while the F-250 and F-350 might be functionally similar, the F-450 comes with larger brakes. Mega Rex Mega Raptor, Pickup Colossus. The Mega Raptor, a mutant Ford Super Duty pickup from Mega Rex, is big. How big? It's so big, it disrupted international shipping for weeks after it got stuck in the Suez Canal. It's so big, there's snow on the roof that never melts. It needs rear axle steering or a hinge in the middle. The turnkey base price is $135,000, and you'll also want a budget for one of those wide-load pilot vehicles to drive a quarter mile ahead and verify clearance for upcoming overpasses. Lift the diesel trucks, meet your new god. The Mega Raptor recipe calls for a Ford Super Duty diesel 4x4, F250, F350, or F450, a 4.0 or 4.5-inch suspension lift, bridge girder size Mega Rex radius arms, trophy truck-style bodywork with a clamshell front end, military MRAP wheels, and 46-inch tires that weigh around 400 pounds per corner with their hub adapters. The final drive is re-geared to a 4.88 to 1 ratio and the speedometer corrected. The resulting creation is surprisingly proportional. Like mountains and skyscrapers, the Megaraptor requires some known frame of reference to visually communicate its enormity. Those flared fiberglass fenders add 16.0 inches of width. The floorboards are about 3 feet off the ground. Wait? It's flirting with 10,000 pounds. But that's okay because the tires are rated for 12,300 pounds. Each. Fortunately, a diesel-powered F-350, like the one hiding beneath all this chutzpah, is designed to haul, even when its payload is itself. You perceive the mass of the wheel and tire assemblies through the steering, and the brakes feel about like they would if there were a ton of concrete in the bed. But it's surprisingly easy to adapt to Megaraptor driving dynamics. Like 787 pilots and ship captains, you just plane your moves in advance. Aaron Richardette, owner of Megarex, says the Ford Super Duty is so brawny in the first place that it lends itself to Megaraptor treatment, even in F-250 guys. There's really no difference between an F-250 and F-350 except the springs, so our usual starting point is an F-250 Lariat, he says. While Megarex will convert an owner's truck, the upfitter usually just buys a new one and builds the whole thing, about 40 last year. If you're looking for stock Super Duty fenders, we know where you can find a few. Richardette claims durability hasn't been a problem thus far, despite the enormous wheel and tire assemblies. Super Duties are overbuilt in the first place, he says. Ford doesn't want grungy work trucks coming back in under warranty. For the Mega Raptor curious, we'd point out that while the F-250 and F-350 might be functionally similar, the F-450 comes with larger brakes. Mega Rex Mega Raptor, Pickup Colossus. The Mega Raptor, a mutant Ford Super Duty pickup from Mega Rex, is big. How big? It's so big, it disrupted international shipping for weeks after it got stuck in the Suez Canal. It's so big, there's snow on the roof that never melts. It needs rear axle steering or a hinge in the middle. The turnkey base price is $135,000, and you'll also want a budget for one of those wide-load pilot vehicles to drive a quarter mile ahead and verify clearance for upcoming overpasses. Lift the diesel trucks, meet your new god. The Mega Raptor recipe calls for a Ford Super Duty diesel 4x4, F250, F350, or F450, a 4.0 or 4.5-inch suspension lift, bridge girder size Mega Rex radius arms, trophy truck-style bodywork with a clamshell front end, military MRAP wheels, and 46-inch tires that weigh around 400 pounds per corner with their hub adapters. The final drive is re-geared to a 4.88 to 1 ratio and the speedometer corrected. The resulting creation is surprisingly proportional. Like mountains and skyscrapers, the Megaraptor requires some known frame of reference to visually communicate its enormity. Those flared fiberglass fenders add 16.0 inches of width. The floorboards are about 3 feet off the ground. Wait? It's flirting with 10,000 pounds. But that's okay because the tires are rated for 12,300 pounds. Each. 
Fortunately, a diesel-powered F-350, like the one hiding beneath all this chutzpah, is designed to haul, even when its payload is itself. You perceive the mass of the wheel and tire assemblies through the steering, and the brakes feel about like they would if there were a ton of concrete in the bed. But it's surprisingly easy to adapt to Megaraptor driving dynamics. Like 787 pilots and ship captains, you just plan your moves in advance. Aaron Richardette, owner of Megarex, says the Ford Super Duty is so brawny in the first place that it lends itself to Megaraptor treatment, even in F-250 guys. There's really no difference between an F-250 and F-350 except the springs, so our usual starting point is an F-250 Lariat, he says. While Megarex will convert an owner's truck, the upfitter usually just buys a new one and builds the whole thing, about 40 last year. If you're looking for stock Super Duty fenders, we know where you can find a few. Richardette claims durability hasn't been a problem thus far, despite the enormous wheel and tire assemblies. Super duties are overbuilt in the first place, he says. Ford doesn't want grungy work trucks coming back in under warranty. For the Megaraptor curious, we'd point out that while the F-250 and F-350 might be functionally similar, the F-450 comes with larger brakes. Megarex Megaraptor, Pickup Colossus The Megaraptor, a mutant Ford Super Duty pickup from Megarex, is big. How big? It's so big, it disrupted international shipping for weeks after it got stuck in the Suez Canal. It's so big, there's snow on the roof that never melts. It needs rear axle steering or a hinge in the middle. The turnkey base price is $135,000, and you'll also want a budget for one of those wide-load pilot vehicles to drive a quarter mile ahead and verify clearance for upcoming overpasses. Lift the diesel trucks, meet your new god. The Megaraptor recipe calls for a Ford Super Duty diesel 4x4, F-250, F-350, or F-450, a 4.0 or 4.5-inch suspension lift, bridge girder size Megarex radius arms, trophy truck-style bodywork with a clamshell front end, military MRAP wheels, and 46-inch tires that weigh around 400 pounds per corner with their hub adapters. The final drive is re-geared to a 4.88 to 1 ratio and the speedometer corrected. The resulting creation is surprisingly proportional. Like mountains and skyscrapers, the Megaraptor requires some known frame of reference to visually communicate its enormity. Those flared fiberglass fenders add 16.0 inches of width. The floorboards are about 3 feet off the ground. Wait? It's flirting with 10,000 pounds. But that's okay because the tires are rated for 12,300 pounds. Each. Fortunately, a diesel-powered F-350, like the one hiding beneath all this chutzpah, is designed to haul, even when its payload is itself. You perceive the mass of the wheel and tire assemblies through the steering, and the brakes feel about like they would if there were a ton of concrete in the bed. But it's surprisingly easy to adapt to Megaraptor driving dynamics. Like 787 pilots and ship captains, you just plan your moves in advance. Aaron Richardette, owner of Megarex, says the Ford Super Duty is so brawny in the first place that it lends itself to Megaraptor treatment, even in F-250 guys. There's really no difference between an F-250 and F-350 except the springs, so our usual starting point is an F-250 Lariat, he says. While Megarex will convert an owner's truck, the upfitter usually just buys a new one and builds the whole thing, about 40 last year. If you're looking for stock Super Duty fenders, we know where you can find a few. Richardette claims durability hasn't been a problem thus far, despite the enormous wheel and tire assemblies. Super Duties are overbuilt in the first place, he says. Ford doesn't want grungy work trucks coming back in under warranty. For the Megaraptor curious, we'd point out that while the F-250 and F-350 might be functionally similar, the F-450 comes with larger brakes. Megarex Megaraptor, Pickup Colossus The Megaraptor, a mutant Ford Super Duty pickup from Megarex, is big. How big? It's so big, it disrupted international shipping for weeks after it got stuck in the Suez Canal. It's so big, there's snow on the roof that never melts. It needs rear axle steering or a hinge in the middle. The turnkey base price is $135,000, and you'll also want a budget for one of those wide-load pilot vehicles to drive a quarter mile ahead and verify clearance for upcoming overpasses. Lift the diesel trucks, meet your new god. The Megaraptor recipe calls for a Ford Super Duty diesel 4x4, F-250, F-350, or F-450, a 4.0 or 4.5-inch suspension lift, bridge girder size Megarex radius arms, trophy truck-style bodywork with a clamshell front end, military MRAP wheels, and 46-inch tires that weigh around 400 pounds per corner with their hub adapters. The final drive is re-geared to a 4.88 to 1 ratio and the speedometer corrected. The resulting creation is surprisingly proportional. 
Like mountains and skyscrapers, the Megaraptor requires some known frame of reference to visually communicate its enormity. Those flared fiberglass fenders add 16.0 inches of width. The floorboards are about 3 feet off the ground. Weight? It's flirting with 10,000 pounds. But that's okay because the tires are rated for 12,300 pounds. Each. Fortunately, a diesel-powered F-350, like the one hiding beneath all this chutzpah, is designed to haul, even when its payload is itself. You perceive the mass of the wheel and tire assemblies through the steering, and the brakes feel about like they would if there were a ton of concrete in the bed. But it's surprisingly easy to adapt to Megaraptor driving dynamics. Like 787 pilots and ship captains, you just plane your moves in advance. Aaron Richardet, owner of Megarex, says the Ford Super Duty is so brawny in the first place that it lends itself to Megaraptor treatment, even in F-250 guys. There's really no difference between an F-250 and F-350 except the springs, so our usual starting point is an F-250 Lariat, he says. While Megarex will convert an owner's truck, the upfitter usually just buys a new one and builds the whole thing, about 40 last year. If you're looking for stock Super Duty fenders, we know where you can find a few. Richard at claims durability hasn't been a problem thus far, despite the enormous wheel and tire assemblies. Super duties are overbuilt in the first place, he says. Ford doesn't want grungy work trucks coming back in under warranty. For the Megaraptor curious, we'd point out that while the F-250 and F-350 might be functionally similar, the F-450 comes with larger brakes. Megarex Megaraptor, Pickup Colossus The Megaraptor, a mutant Ford Super Duty pickup from Megarex, is big. How big? It's so big, it disrupted international shipping for weeks after it got stuck in the Suez Canal. It's so big, there's snow on the roof that never melts. It needs rear axle steering or a hinge in the middle. The turnkey base price is $135,000, and you'll also want a budget for one of those wide-load pilot vehicles to drive a quarter mile ahead and verify clearance for upcoming overpasses. Lift the diesel trucks, meet your new god. The Megaraptor recipe calls for a Ford Super Duty diesel 4x4, F250, F350, or F450, a 4.0 or 4.5-inch suspension lift, bridge girder size Megarex radius arms, trophy truck-style bodywork with a clamshell front end, military MRAP wheels, and 46-inch tires that weigh around 400 pounds per corner with their hub adapters. The final drive is re-geared to a 4.88 to 1 ratio and the speedometer corrected. The resulting creation is surprisingly proportional. Like mountains and skyscrapers, the Megaraptor requires some known frame of reference to visually communicate its enormity. Those flared fiberglass fenders add 16.0 inches of width. The floorboards are about 3 feet off the ground. Weight? It's flirting with 10,000 pounds. But that's okay because the tires are rated for 12,300 pounds. Each. Fortunately, a diesel-powered F-350, like the one hiding beneath all this chutzpah, is designed to haul, even when its payload is itself. You perceive the mass of the wheel and tire assemblies through the steering, and the brakes feel about like they would if there were a ton of concrete in the bed. But it's surprisingly easy to adapt to Megaraptor driving dynamics. Like 787 pilots and ship captains, you just plane your moves in advance. Aaron Richardette, owner of Megarex, says the Ford Super Duty is so brawny in the first place that it lends itself to Megaraptor treatment, even in F-250 guys. There's really no difference between an F-250 and F-350 except the springs, so our usual starting point is an F-250 Lariat, he says. While Megarex will convert an owner's truck, the upfitter usually just buys a new one and builds the whole thing, about 40 last year. If you're looking for stock Super Duty fenders, we know where you can find a few. Richard at claims durability hasn't been a problem thus far, despite the enormous wheel and tire assemblies. Super Duties are overbuilt in the first place, he says. Ford doesn't want grungy work trucks coming back in under warranty. For the Megaraptor curious, we'd point out that while the F-250 and F-350 might be functionally similar, the F-450 comes with larger brakes. Megarex Megaraptor, Pickup Colossus The Megaraptor, a mutant Ford Super Duty pickup from Megarex, is big. How big? It's so big, it disrupted international shipping for weeks after it got stuck in the Suez Canal. It's so big, there's snow on the roof that never melts. It needs rear axle steering or a hinge in the middle. The turnkey base price is $135,000, and you'll also want a budget for one of those wide-load pilot vehicles to drive a quarter mile ahead and verify clearance for upcoming overpasses. Lift the diesel trucks, meet your new god. The Megaraptor recipe calls for a Ford Super Duty diesel 4x4, F250, F350, or F450, a 4.0 or 4.5-inch suspension lift, bridge girder size Megarex radius arms,
2024 Ford Mustang Dark Horse shows off carbon wheels, special color. Ford showed off the upcoming 2024 Mustang Dark Horse, fitted with its optional set of carbon fiber wheels, along with our first glimpse of its interior. The lightweight wheels tip the scales at 20.1 pounds, a figure that equates to roughly 37% lighter than the standard Dark Horse aluminum wheels. The Dark Horse's interior features blue bolstering and stitching on the Recaro seats, along with an anodized blue titanium shift knob. The new 2024 Ford Mustang looks fantastic a set of carbon fiber dancing shoes. Ford announced today that it will offer a carbon wheel option when the Dark Horse Performance model goes on sale later this year. The lightweight wheels tip the scales at 20.1 pounds each, making them approximately 37% lighter than Dark Horse aluminum wheels, according to Ford. They were developed in collaboration with Carbon Revolution, and they follow the carbon fiber wheels that Ford previously offered on the GT Supercar and the Mustang Shelby GT350R. Using aerospace engineering-inspired technology, Carbon Revolution used a plasma arc spray inside the front wheels to keep them protected from high temperatures caused under braking. The wheels were 305 divided by 30 or minus 19 Trofeo RS performance tires at the front, and 315 divided by 30 or minus 19 tires at the rear. The Mustang Dark Horse you see here is also finished in a special exterior paint color called Blue Ember that's said to shift shades in different lighting. Along with the fancy wheels and special color, Ford gave us our first glimpse of the interior trim that's exclusive to the Dark Horse. The Moody Cabin combines a variety of black and blue hues. Bright indigo blue stitching is found on the steering wheel, the door panels, the shift boot, and the Recaro Performance seats. Opting for the Dark Horse appearance package adds a deep indigo blue finish for the seat bolsters and seat belts to round out the theme of the interior. The seat backs are finished in black Dinamica suede while on the dash the bezels and vents are finished in a dark metallic gloss that replaces the silver shades from lower Mustang trim levels. Carbon fiber trim spans the front of the instrument and door panels and the three-spoke steering wheel. Customers who opt for the six-speed manual transmission will get to row through the gears with a special anodized blue, lightweight titanium manual shift knob. The shift knob is hollow, which Ford says helps keep it cool in warmer weather. Anyone who chooses the 10-speed automatic transmission is awarded the consolation prize of anodized silver paddle shifters. As a final touch, each Mustang Dark Horse features an instrument panel badge that includes the vehicle's chassis number. 2024 Ford Mustang Dark Horse shows off carbon wheels, special color. Ford showed off the upcoming 2024 Mustang Dark Horse fitted with its optional set of carbon fiber wheels, along with our first glimpse of its interior. The lightweight wheels tip the scales at 20.1 pounds, a figure that equates to roughly 37% lighter than the standard Dark Horse aluminum wheels. The Dark Horse's interior features blue bolstering and stitching on the Recaro seats, along with an anodized blue titanium shift knob. The new 2024 Ford Mustang looks fantastic a set of carbon fiber dancing shoes. Ford announced today that it will offer a carbon wheel option when the Dark Horse performance model goes on sale later this year. The lightweight wheels tip the scales at 20.1 pounds each, making them approximately 37% lighter than Dark Horse aluminum wheels, according to Ford. They were developed in collaboration with Carbon Revolution, and they follow the carbon fiber wheels that Ford previously offered on the GT Supercar and the Mustang Shelby GT350R. Using aerospace engineering-inspired technology, Carbon Revolution used a plasma arc spray inside the front wheels to keep them protected from high temperatures caused under braking. The wheels were 305 divided by 30 or minus 19 Trofeo RS performance tires at the front, and 315 divided by 30 or minus 19 tires at the rear. The Mustang Dark Horse you see here is also finished in a special exterior paint color called Blue Ember that's said to shift shades in different lighting. Along with the fancy wheels and special color, Ford gave us our first glimpse of the interior trim that's exclusive to the Dark Horse. The Moody Cabin combines a variety of black and blue hues. Bright indigo blue stitching is found on the steering wheel, the door panels, the shift boot, and the Recaro performance seats. Opting for the Dark Horse appearance package adds a deep indigo blue finish for the seat bolsters and seat belts to round out the theme of the interior. The seat backs are finished in black Dinamica suede, while on the dash the bezels and vents are finished in a dark metallic gloss that replaces the silver shades from lower Mustang trim levels. Carbon fiber trim spans the front of the instrument and door panels, and the three-spoke steering wheel. Customers who opt for the six-speed manual transmission will get to row through the gears with a special anodized blue, lightweight titanium manual shift knob. The shift knob is hollow, which Ford says helps keep it cool in warmer weather. Anyone who chooses the 10-speed automatic transmission is awarded the consolation prize of anodized silver paddle shifters. As a final touch, each Mustang Dark Horse features an instrument panel badge that includes the vehicle's chassis number. 2024 Ford Mustang Dark Horse shows off carbon wheels, special color. 
Ford showed off the upcoming 2024 Mustang Dark Horse, fitted with its optional set of carbon fiber wheels, along with our first glimpse of its interior. The lightweight wheels tip the scales at 20.1 pounds, a figure that equates to roughly 37% lighter than the standard Dark Horse aluminum wheels. The Dark Horse's interior features blue bolstering and stitching on the Recaro seats, along with an anodized blue titanium shift knob. The new 2024 Ford Mustang looks fantastic a set of carbon fiber dancing shoes. Ford announced today that it will offer a carbon wheel option when the Dark Horse Performance model goes on sale later this year. The lightweight wheels tip the scales at 20.1 pounds each, making them approximately 37% lighter than Dark Horse aluminum wheels, according to Ford. They were developed in collaboration with Carbon Revolution, and they follow the carbon fiber wheels that Ford previously offered on the GT Supercar and the Mustang Shelby GT350R. Using aerospace engineering-inspired technology, Carbon Revolution used a plasma arc spray inside the front wheels to keep them protected from high temperatures caused under braking. The wheels were 305 divided by 30 or minus 19 Trofeo RS performance tires at the front, and 315 divided by 30 or minus 19 tires at the rear. The Mustang Dark Horse you see here is also finished in a special exterior paint color called Blue Ember that's said to shift shades in different lighting. Along with the fancy wheels and special color, Ford gave us our first glimpse of the interior trim that's exclusive to the Dark Horse. The Moody Cabin combines a variety of black and blue hues. Bright indigo blue stitching is found on the steering wheel, the door panels, the shift boot, and the Recaro Performance seats. Opting for the Dark Horse appearance package adds a deep indigo blue finish for the seat bolsters and seat belts to round out the theme of the interior. The seat backs are finished in black Dinamica suede while on the dash the bezels and vents are finished in a dark metallic gloss that replaces the silver shades from lower Mustang trim levels. Carbon fiber trim spans the front of the instrument and door panels and the three-spoke steering wheel. Customers who opt for the six-speed manual transmission will get to row through the gears with a special anodized blue, lightweight titanium manual shift knob. The shift knob is hollow, which Ford says helps keep it cool in warmer weather. Anyone who chooses the 10-speed automatic transmission is awarded the consolation prize of anodized silver paddle shifters. As a final touch, each Mustang Dark Horse features an instrument panel badge that includes the vehicle's chassis number. 2024 Ford Mustang Dark Horse shows off carbon wheels, special color. Ford showed off the upcoming 2024 Mustang Dark Horse fitted with its optional set of carbon fiber wheels, along with our first glimpse of its interior. The lightweight wheels tip the scales at 20.1 pounds, a figure that equates to roughly 37% lighter than the standard Dark Horse aluminum wheels. The Dark Horse's interior features blue bolstering and stitching on the Recaro seats, along with an anodized blue titanium shift knob. The new 2024 Ford Mustang looks fantastic a set of carbon fiber dancing shoes. Ford announced today that it will offer a carbon wheel option when the Dark Horse performance model goes on sale later this year. The lightweight wheels tip the scales at 20.1 pounds each, making them approximately 37% lighter than Dark Horse aluminum wheels, according to Ford. They were developed in collaboration with Carbon Revolution, and they follow the carbon fiber wheels that Ford previously offered on the GT Supercar and the Mustang Shelby GT350R. Using aerospace engineering-inspired technology, Carbon Revolution used a plasma arc spray inside the front wheels to keep them protected from high temperatures caused under braking. The wheels were 305 divided by 30 or minus 19 Trofeo RS performance tires at the front, and 315 divided by 30 or minus 19 tires at the rear. The Mustang Dark Horse you see here is also finished in a special exterior paint color called Blue Ember that's said to shift shades in different lighting. Along with the fancy wheels and special color, Ford gave us our first glimpse of the interior trim that's exclusive to the Dark Horse. The Moody Cabin combines a variety of black and blue hues. Bright indigo blue stitching is found on the steering wheel, the door panels, the shift boot, and the Recaro performance seats. Opting for the Dark Horse appearance package adds a deep indigo blue finish for the seat bolsters and seat belts to round out the theme of the interior. The seat backs are finished in black Dinamica suede, while on the dash the bezels and vents are finished in a dark metallic gloss that replaces the silver shades from lower Mustang trim levels. Carbon fiber trim spans the front of the instrument and door panels, and the three-spoke steering wheel. Customers who opt for the six-speed manual transmission will get to row through the gears with a special anodized blue, lightweight titanium manual shift knob. The shift knob is hollow, which Ford says helps keep it cool in warmer weather. Anyone who chooses the 10-speed automatic transmission is awarded the consolation prize of anodized silver paddle shifters. As a final touch, each Mustang Dark Horse features an instrument panel badge that includes the vehicle's chassis number. 2024 Ford Mustang Dark Horse shows off carbon wheels, special color. 
Ford showed off the upcoming 2024 Mustang Dark Horse, fitted with its optional set of carbon fiber wheels, along with our first glimpse of its interior. The lightweight wheels tip the scales at 20.1 pounds, a figure that equates to roughly 37% lighter than the standard Dark Horse aluminum wheels. The Dark Horse's interior features blue bolstering and stitching on the Recaro seats, along with an anodized blue titanium shift knob. The new 2024 Ford Mustang looks fantastic a set of carbon fiber dancing shoes. Ford announced today that it will offer a carbon wheel option when the Dark Horse Performance model goes on sale later this year. The lightweight wheels tip the scales at 20.1 pounds each, making them approximately 37% lighter than Dark Horse aluminum wheels, according to Ford. They were developed in collaboration with Carbon Revolution, and they follow the carbon fiber wheels that Ford previously offered on the GT Supercar and the Mustang Shelby GT350R. Using aerospace engineering-inspired technology, Carbon Revolution used a plasma arc spray inside the front wheels to keep them protected from high temperatures caused under braking. The wheels were 305 divided by 30 or minus 19 Trofeo RS performance tires at the front, and 315 divided by 30 or minus 19 tires at the rear. The Mustang Dark Horse you see here is also finished in a special exterior paint color called Blue Ember that's said to shift shades in different lighting. Along with the fancy wheels and special color, Ford gave us our first glimpse of the interior trim that's exclusive to the Dark Horse. The Moody Cabin combines a variety of black and blue hues. Bright indigo blue stitching is found on the steering wheel, the door panels, the shift boot, and the Recaro performance seats. Opting for the Dark Horse appearance package adds a deep indigo blue finish for the seat bolsters and seat belts to round out the theme of the interior. The seat backs are finished in black Dinamica suede while on the dash the bezels and vents are finished in a dark metallic gloss that replaces the silver shades from lower Mustang trim levels. Carbon fiber trim spans the front of the instrument and door panels and the three-spoke steering wheel. Customers who opt for the six-speed manual transmission will get to row through the gears with a special anodized blue, lightweight titanium manual shift knob. The shift knob is hollow, which Ford says helps keep it cool in warmer weather. Anyone who chooses the 10-speed automatic transmission is awarded the consolation prize of anodized silver paddle shifters. As a final touch, each Mustang Dark Horse features an instrument panel badge that includes the vehicle's chassis number. 2024 Ford Mustang Dark Horse shows off carbon wheels, special color. Ford showed off the upcoming 2024 Mustang Dark Horse fitted with its optional set of carbon fiber wheels, along with our first glimpse of its interior. The lightweight wheels tip the scales at 20.1 pounds, a figure that equates to roughly 37% lighter than the standard Dark Horse aluminum wheels. The Dark Horse's interior features blue bolstering and stitching on the Recaro seats, along with an anodized blue titanium shift knob. The new 2024 Ford Mustang looks fantastic a set of carbon fiber dancing shoes. Ford announced today that it will offer a carbon wheel option when the Dark Horse performance model goes on sale later this year. The lightweight wheels tip the scales at 20.1 pounds each, making them approximately 37% lighter than Dark Horse aluminum wheels, according to Ford. They were developed in collaboration with Carbon Revolution, and they follow the carbon fiber wheels that Ford previously offered on the GT Supercar and the Mustang Shelby GT350R. Using aerospace engineering-inspired technology, Carbon Revolution used a plasma arc spray inside the front wheels to keep them protected from high temperatures caused under braking. The wheels were 305 divided by 30 or minus 19 Trofeo RS performance tires at the front, and 315 divided by 30 or minus 19 tires at the rear. The Mustang Dark Horse you see here is also finished in a special exterior paint color called Blue Ember that's said to shift shades in different lighting. Along with the fancy wheels and special color, Ford gave us our first glimpse of the interior trim that's exclusive to the Dark Horse. The Moody Cabin combines a variety of black and blue hues. Bright indigo blue stitching is found on the steering wheel, the door panels, the shift boot, and the Recaro performance seats. Opting for the Dark Horse appearance package adds a deep indigo blue finish for the seat bolsters and seat belts to round out the theme of the interior. The seat backs are finished in black Dinamica suede, while on the dash the bezels and vents are finished in a dark metallic gloss that replaces the silver shades from lower Mustang trim levels. Carbon fiber trim spans the front of the instrument and door panels, and the three-spoke steering wheel. Customers who opt for the six-speed manual transmission will get to row through the gears with a special anodized blue, lightweight titanium manual shift knob. The shift knob is hollow, which Ford says helps keep it cool in warmer weather. Anyone who chooses the 10-speed automatic transmission is awarded the consolation prize of anodized silver paddle shifters. As a final touch, each Mustang Dark Horse features an instrument panel badge that includes the vehicle's chassis number. 2024 Ford Mustang Dark Horse shows off carbon wheels, special color. 
Ford showed off the upcoming 2024 Mustang Dark Horse, fitted with its optional set of carbon fiber wheels, along with our first glimpse of its interior. The lightweight wheels tip the scales at 20.1 pounds, a figure that equates to roughly 37% lighter than the standard Dark Horse aluminum wheels. The Dark Horse's interior features blue bolstering and stitching on the Recaro seats, along with an anodized blue titanium shift knob. The new 2024 Ford Mustang looks fantastic a set of carbon fiber dancing shoes. Ford announced today that it will offer a carbon wheel option when the Dark Horse Performance model goes on sale later this year. The lightweight wheels tip the scales at 20.1 pounds each, making them approximately 37% lighter than Dark Horse aluminum wheels, according to Ford. They were developed in collaboration with Carbon Revolution, and they follow the carbon fiber wheels that Ford previously offered on the GT Supercar and the Mustang Shelby GT350R. Using aerospace engineering-inspired technology, Carbon Revolution used a plasma arc spray inside the front wheels to keep them protected from high temperatures caused under braking. The wheels were 305 divided by 30 or minus 19 Trofeo RS performance tires at the front, and 315 divided by 30 or minus 19 tires at the rear. The Mustang Dark Horse you see here is also finished in a special exterior paint color called Blue Ember that's said to shift shades in different lighting. Along with the fancy wheels and special color, Ford gave us our first glimpse of the interior trim that's exclusive to the Dark Horse. The Moody Cabin combines a variety of black and blue hues. Bright indigo blue stitching is found on the steering wheel, the door panels, the shift boot, and the Recaro Performance seats. Opting for the Dark Horse appearance package adds a deep indigo blue finish for the seat bolsters and seat belts to round out the theme of the interior. The seat backs are finished in black Dinamica suede, while on the dash the bezels and vents are finished in a dark metallic gloss that replaces the silver shades from lower Mustang trim levels. Carbon fiber trim spans the front of the instrument and door panels, and the three-spoke steering wheel. Customers who opt for the six-speed manual transmission will get to row through the gears with a special anodized blue, lightweight titanium manual shift knob. The shift knob is hollow, which Ford says helps keep it cool in warmer weather. Anyone who chooses the 10-speed automatic transmission is awarded the consolation prize of anodized silver paddle shifters. As a final touch, each Mustang Dark Horse 